PCSX2 is the undisputed king of PlayStation 2 emulation, having been around for two decades. It's evolved quite nicely and boasts impressive compatibility across the entire library. It even supports 64-bit computers now, and has a new Vulkan renderer, which helps with performance on all systems. However, there's no denying that its user interface has aged quite badly. And it's a real pain to change the emulation settings every time you want to play another game. So is there a solution to this annoying problem? Why yes, there is, and it's called Spectarbis, a front-end for PCSX2 which drastically improves the user interface. Plus, it allows for per-game configuration. So once you change a game settings, it stays that way. No need to worry once you want to play another game. In this guide I will very briefly explain how to install PCSX2 and its front-end. Once you've googled PCSX2 in your browser, click on the first link that shows up. From there, click on download, but skip the stable builds and go down to the nightly builds instead. You should always select the latest version. And make sure it's a 64-bit AVX2 version, because those are the best for performance. Download it to your PC and then extract it to your desktop. I usually like to keep my PCSX2 folder in my C drive. And I always make a shortcut to my desktop, to make things easier. There is no installer, so everything is done manually. Just watch what I do while I set up PCSX2 on my computer. Before you can run the emulator, however, make sure to download the required BIOS files that PCSX2 needs. I can't tell you where to download them, but a simple Google search should yield results. Once the BIOS files are downloaded, create a BIOS folder inside PCSX2 and drag everything inside. Now we can move on to configuring Spectarbis. In your browser, Google for Spectarbis and click on the first result at the top of the screen. Click on download and then scroll down until you get to this file. This is what you want. Just like before. Download the archive and extract it to your desktop. I will put my Spectarbis folder inside the PCSX2 folder. Make sure to direct Spectarbis to the PCSX2 executable before continuing. The first time you run Spectarbis, it will prompt you to select the preferred language and BIOS. Just make sure to follow my example.
Once that's done, launch Spectarbis and go to its settings tab. Make sure that the game's DB is at the top of the priority list, and then make sure it's turned on. After that, you're done with the settings, but you may want to turn on night mode, if you dislike the glare. As another option, play around with the color themes and see which ones you like. Now it's time to add our game to Spectarbis. Click on the plus icon and select, Add Game. Browse to where you have your ISO file downloaded, select the file and click Open. After a while you will see that the cover art is automatically installed as well. Now go back to your library. Now right-click on your game and select Game Configuration. Then make sure to activate full screen and no graphical interface. This is to hide the PCSX2 interface while playing the game. Now it's time to configure our game. Please remember that these settings will only apply to this particular game. Right-click again and select Configure in PCSX2. Now you will be back in the emulator's interface. Firstly, go to Config and General Settings. Go to the Window GS tab and change the Aspect Ratio to 4x3, if required. Then make sure that Always Hide Mouse Cursor and Start in Full Screen Mode are activated. After that, go to the Speed Hacks tab and activate the MTVU hack. Click on Apply and OK to save the settings. Lastly, Go to the graphic settings. Vulkan is already the best renderer in most cases, so select it from the drop-down menu. If you have discrete graphics, like an NVIDIA or AMD card, activate GPU palette conversion. You can dial up the internal resolution as high as you want, but most games will look fine at 1080p. After that you can click OK, which will save your graphic settings. Then, on the PCSX2 menu, click on System and click on Exit. The game will now have its unique settings saved. With that finished, double-click on the game and allow it to run normally. Your controller should work fine out of the box. One more thing, if you're unsure of which settings to use, there is an easy way to get help. On Spectarbis, go back to Game Configuration and click here on PCSX2 Wiki. This will lead you to the website, and tell you all you need to know regarding the game settings. This is important to know, since some games work better with certain renderers or hacks. Anyway, we've come to the end of the video. So if you liked what you saw, please give a like. Have a nice day and hopefully we'll meet again. Goodbye.